Welcome to this presentation on a big data analysis on the coupling selection and model development of a data-driven dome proposal that we did as part of a research project at Sonova. We here focus on the Phonarch open domes, vented domes and power domes. And the question now is, um, what is the optimal coupling or the optimal dome for a fitting? And usually when you look at it, there are several aspects to consider. Um, one is, for instance, occlusion effect, wearing comfort and natural sound. This all is usually better the more open the fitting is. Um, on the other hand, the more closed you go, um, then you have a better intelligibility, better streaming quality, a lower risk of feedback and better sound cleaning. In the Phonak target fitting software, there already is a dome proposal. You see for this fitting here on the left, the crosses here for the power dome, so power, power dome would have been proposed. And the question now is, when we look at a data set of Phonak target fittings, um, roughly 50,000, what is the proposed value compared to what is actually being in the end selected? And we see that here on the left, 50% of the cases actually power domes are being proposed, but only half of them being are being selected in the end. And there's a so there's a too high proportion there, and a large ratio actually goes towards the vented domes, um, which we only propose currently at 13% uh, of the cases. So there's room for improvement there. To understand a bit better on what are relevant parameters for HCPs or users to select a specific coupling, we first look at the correlation of the closeness of a coupling um, with respect to some parameters. Um, these are listed here, for instance. We've analyzed the whole list of them, but these are just the highlights. Um, the first part is the four pure tone average shearing loss, high correlation there, that is expected, right? Um, the other part, um, is, for instance, the experience, which is maybe a bit more surprising. So the more experience a user has in wearing a hearing instrument, the more they lean towards uh, a close coupling. Uh, I will go on the next slide in a bit more details there. And the other part, where I'll not have enough time to go into much details, there's the hearing loss asymmetry. But we see there, when we have a higher hearing loss on the contralateral ear, also um, there is a tendency for a more close coupling selection. Now let's look a bit deeper into the experience level dependence. And of course, experience can be dependent on the hearing loss itself. And then there we have the correlation to the coupling selection there. So to exclude this and analyze this a bit further, we uh, first look at a very specific hearing loss group. So we take an N3 hearing loss with a four pure tone average of 46 plus minus five dB. The N hearing loss groups are by the way shown here on the left. Um, when we take this specific hearing loss group and look at, okay, when we have a first time user experience or long term user, how does the ratio of a power dome, vented dome, or open dome change? And we see a clear trend there that the more experience the user has, the more they lean towards a closed coupling. So now we want to bring this information into a model and develop a new proposal. And for that, we take, again, the data that we have from the data lake, um, get out the relevant background information. That's now not only the ipsilateral audiogram, but also the other parameters, such as the experience that we've looked at before, and the contralateral audiogram for the hearing loss asymmetry, and try to predict from that what is the optimal dome. Um, and to do that, of course, we first need to do some data cleaning, and the model is then realized by a neural network there. But the question now, of course, is, are we sure that this data is really giving us the optimal dome? And to address this, we actually extend it a bit. So um, what we also look at is the wearing time now, for instance. So when the average wearing time is very low, we probably have some indication that the fitting was not as successful, or there was at least like not a good customer satisfaction there. So we actually, when it's low, we exclude the data. But also we know that when it's high, like we should, we should train the network a bit more towards these data samples compared to like an average wearing time. Um, and we realize that by 
a data augmentation. So basically samples where we have a um, where we think like that the customer was satisfied with it, we duplicate them, add some noise, such that the network can be trained towards these samples. Um, of course, these scores are normalized, such that we actually exclude um, yeah, some other dependencies to the hearing loss, for instance. And now thinking about that or extending upon that is that we also want to bring in our domain knowledge a bit. Like we also want to tweak the network towards high audiological performance because actually the wearing time, for instance, can be high for some fittings. Let's say a severe hearing loss fitted with an open dome, you have a high comfort. It might bring some benefit, but it's not really good fitting, right? But it would have a high wearing time. So we need to balance this a bit with another parameter. And what we do there is we take the fitting information, compute the real insertion gain from that, and from that compute the eligibility that we would expect with such a fitting, for instance, using the SII. Um, and then again, like when it's low or high, like we either clean, filter out the data or augment it. And the results of the new data-driven proposal are shown here on the right. So when it says our model, our proposal. And that is in comparison to what we were seeing before, like the prior proposal. And what we now see, where we were seeing before, like the 50% proposition there, we now see that the proposition of power domes matches much better like what is actually being selected. There's still like quite an uncertainty there. It's probably also due to the bias that we have in the data. Um, but um, we also don't know everything about the user. So like there is always like some part of uncertainty. And we increase acceptance then from 60% uh, to 65%, so roughly 5% point increase. So in summary, the data analysis revealed that the current proposal, there is a potential for improvement. Um, we had some previously overlooked parameters such as experience and hearing loss asymmetry, which become relevant when we develop a new, for instance, a data-driven machine learning model. And for that, we did a rigorous data cleaning and pre-processing, focusing on customer satisfaction and audiological performance. And this resulted then in a new model uh, with a 5% point increase in proposal acceptance. And with that, I'm finished and would like to thank you for your attention.